Hey everybody, welcome to the channel and thanks for checking out the channel. I really do enjoy my Yaesu FTE 891, but it doesn't have a built-in sound card. So in order to do digital modes, we must do something like have a DigiRig DR891, which is an external sound card. Today, I'm gonna to go through the process of getting this set up and configured. And by the end of the episode, we'll be able to operate our favorite digital modes such as FT8, FT4, WinLink, so let's get started with things. This install is intended for Windows users. And when I set up everything in the programs today, it will be WSJTX that I'll be configuring. And if you would like to follow along, there's a link below to the DigiRigs website where they have a PDF document on how to install this. The DigiRig DR891 comes with just about everything we need to be able to get everything configured with one exception. The DigiRig DR891 does not come with a USB cable that would be used to hook up to your tablet or your computer. In my case today, the USB cable on the tablet is USB-C, so I will need a USB-C to USB-C cable. Hello, Amazon. It'll be right here. Now, I will tell you that it is very important to have some kind of choke in between your laptop or tablet and your radio. And without it, you might see an increase on the noise floor and you might just get some really weird RFI. So today I didn't have that and I just used a T14043 to temporarily suppress the noise while I do wait for that cable to come in with built-in choke or ferrites. Our first step is going to be to take the digi rig and to take our cables and plug our cables in. As you'll notice, I have a red cable here and on the digi rig itself, I have a red slot plug that in and we're going to do the same one with the black cable. Just like that. On the digi rig cable that came with the digi rig, we now have two connectors left and both of these connectors are going to go into the back of our Yaesu FT891. The USB cable is pretty obvious because there's only one USB slot on the back of the 891. So we're going to plug that in now. Very good. The only other cable we have to plug in is this one right here. There's only one real way to put it in. As we see, there's a little bit of a notch or a tab in the middle of the cable, and we could see the spot for the notch on the top portion of the backside of the transceiver. This will only go in one way, so do not try to force it. You might cause damage. And you might notice that I'm plugging this in directly next to the USB port. Our next step is going to involve our tablet computer. And so what we will want to do is we're going to want to hook in our USB-C to our digi rig and to the back of our computer or tablet. Now along the way, you might have some possible problems and that USB-C cable is really one of the first issues you might have. So my USB-C cable, when I plugged it into the digi rig and into the computer, I would go into Device Manager and I was looking for a USB audio device speakers and a USB audio device microphone and I really didn't see those. In other words, Windows was not detecting the digi rig and the first thing I did was take that USB-C cable out and I took that toroid out and I plugged it back in and still nothing was detected. So I swapped out USB-C cables for now and in Device Manager under Audio, I do see both the microphone and the speakers, USB audio device. Now that we are sure that both speakers to USB audio device as well as microphone to USB audio device are detected, we take a look down at the ports section. And although we do see two flex radio virtual ports, we don't see any Silicon Labs virtual ports, which are the drivers for the Yaesu FT891. And we need to install those now if we don't see them. What we will do is go to the Silicon Labs website and download the VCP drivers. I'm using Windows 11, so I'll choose CP210X Universal Windows Driver, and it will download to my downloads folder. It's at this point, we'll click the Extract All button toward the top of this screen and extract the files. Once those files are extracted, 
what we're going to do is very simple. With these extracted files, our goal is to now install the drivers. And you'll see two files that say the same thing, S-I-L-A-B-S-E-R. But the one with the gear icon can be installed. Okay, so what we're going to do is we want to right click on that actual file. And there should be an option there for view more options or show more options. Let's click that. And then we have a screen that appears with an option to install. Let's click install and then click open. We now see the operation has completed successful. So we'll jump back into device manager. In the device manager, we're gonna click on the action tab toward the top of the screen. Clicking on the action tab, we're gonna click scan for hardware changes and we will now see those new devices installed. They're indicated under the ports section and they should say Silicon Labs. Now's a great time to remind you if these instructions are too fast or too slow for you, you could utilize YouTube's playback feature to play this at half speed or double speed. Alternatively, you could always stop and pause the video or go back. Next up, we need to change certain settings on the Yaesu FT891 so that proper communication occurs between the laptop or tablet and our 891, proper cat control. In order for us to access the menu, which we'll change these settings in, we want to hold down the function button. The function button will allow us to access the menu if it's held down. We're nowhere in the menu because it says menu here, and we're in menu section 12 now. The first options we need to do is go into option 6-5. And so we're going to use the bottom left knob to scroll up. And I think I said that backwards. I think it was 5-6. There you go. Cat rate. In order for us to change this, all we have to do is tap on that same knob we were adjusting. And we could see now that it's highlighted in black. We want to change our bits per second to 9600. Once we select 9600, tap on that knob again. Next, we're going to change our TOT rate to 1000. Menu item 5-8 should be disabled, and it is. Next up, menu 5-12, the ATAS setting should be disabled. Next up, we're going to scroll down to menu 7-12, and this will be for PC keying. As you can see, this is set off, and that is good. Next, we'll go to section 8-1, and we're going to go to data mode, and we're going to set this to others. Next, section 8-5, data low cut frequency. Let's set that to off. And if we go up to 8-7, the high cut frequency, we'll set that to off. And you might notice that the data high cut frequency is set to off by going clockwise, as opposed to the low cut frequency going counterclockwise, and that makes sense. Next up, menu 8-9, data in select. It is set to rear, so that's good. Right below it, 8-10, data PTT select or push to talk select, D-A-K-Y. Menu 8-11, data out level, and it's set to 50. Menu 8-12, data BFO, USB. Now we're gonna get into menu 16, which deals with the power levels. And at 16-03, HF power, I have it set to 100. We're gonna set it down to 40 watts as per the instructions on DigiRig's website. And finally, 16-14. Data, data gain is set to 50 and that's good. Now, in order for us to exit the menu, we're just gonna hold down the function key one more time. And we're back to the main screen. The next setting we will need to change is in the function settings. And so we're going to tap on function as opposed to holding it down. What we're going to do is we're going to keep tapping until we find a menu that looks like this, function one. And we're going to just click on WDH. And what I did there is I used the scroll feature on that knob we've been using. 
until I got to WDH and then I tapped on it. You can see right now it's set to 2400 and I can make it more or less narrow. We will set this to 3000 and then tap on that knob one more time. Next, we want to make sure that everything else within the function menus are disabled except for meter and automatic gain control, which are your choices, of course. Go ahead and hold down the function key to get back to the main menu. Next, we're going to want to change a few things within our audio device or our sound card. If we're on our main window screen, we might see a little volume icon at the bottom right of the screen toward the time and the date. If we click on it, we might get some options that show us things like our volume bar. And if we click on our volume bar, we should have a list of sound output devices. I have a lot of devices because of the flex radio. Down below, there is something that says more volume settings. And if we click it, we should be brought into a window, which will allow us to make multiple changes within our sound card devices. DigiRig recommends that we change the name of our speakers for the USB audio device and our microphone audio device. You can see I've already changed the microphone audio device to be called microphone DigiRig, but I wanna show you how to do this in case you'd like to change it and it really makes things more convenient down the road if you ever have to reference or change any settings in the sound settings. So if I click on speakers, USB to audio device, I'm presented with a screen with a bunch of options like volume and left and right channel, but there's also a button here that says rename. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in speakers and then I'm going to do a space and DigiRig. DigiRig recommends that you type in the name DigiRig. However, this one's easy and convenient for me and you should name it in a convention that would be easy for you to remember as well. Let's go ahead now and we're back on the sound properties. If we click on the sound setting, we now see that it's been renamed speaker DigiRig and microphone DigiRig. Next, we're back in the sound section of our system options and we're going to scroll down toward the bottom of the sound options. There should be an option there that says more sound settings. Let's go ahead and click on that and once it loads, will be presented with a tab that shows both playback and recording devices. As you could see right here, speakers DigiRig is set to the default device. Same thing with our recording device. If we go to recording, microphone DigiRig is set to the default device. And what that will do is, if any sounds play through your computer, they'll in theory go through your FT891 and then they could be rebroadcasted over the airwaves. So we want to change those so they're back to our normal devices. Here I use speakers real tech, so I'm going to click on it and I'm going to set it as a default device. I'm going to do the same thing under recording and I'm going to find my default microphone, should be a real tech as well. Yours might be different. And you probably won't have all these options. I have them all because of the flex radio, but there it is microphone array. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to set it as a default device. My apologies. We also will want to right click on it one more time and set it as a default communication device. Same thing with our speakers, set it as a default communications device. So to wrap it up, we right clicked on it twice and we selected both options to set it as a default device and a default communications device. Next, we're gonna to wanna to click on the recording tab and we're going to wanna go back up to our DigiRig setting. So now that I have our DigiRig microphone, I'm going to right click on it and we're going to click on properties. Under properties, there's multiple tabs, general listen, custom levels in advance. Let's click on custom and make sure that AGC or automatic gain control is unchecked as you see here. Let's click on the advanced tab for just a moment. Under the advanced tab, I don't see anything that would need to be changed. Let's click on levels. Let's set this microphone level for now down to 50%. Let's click on the listen tab and you do have the option to listen to the device if you'd like to. I'm gonna leave that unchecked and let's click on general. Everything looks good, let's click okay. That should save the settings. A critical step 
which I almost forgot to put in here, was going into our sound playback properties. And under our playback digi rig option, we want to go into the options where we could see multiple tabs, find the enhancements tab, and make sure that all enhancements are disabled. This allows for a better opportunity for the FT891 and Digi rig to communicate with the computer and properly encode and or decode any signals here possible. Adding digital enhancements can create conflict. And now we should be just about ready to go into WSJTX to get that configured. In WSJTX, we're gonna click on the file button and we're gonna go down to settings. Here we're gonna set up WSJTX with our call sign and our grid square. Next, we wanna click on the audio tab and for input and output, we wanna find both of those DigiRig microphone devices and DigiRig speaker devices that we saw earlier in the device manager. Then we're gonna click on the radio tab. This is where we'll set up the 891 for cat control. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click on rig and we wanna scroll down to find Yezu FT891. It's a little more difficult on a tablet without a mouse. So if you have a mouse, I would highly recommend it. If we jump back into the device manager and we scroll down to our ports, we should see the COM ports for both enhanced and standard COM ports. Right now we're worried about enhanced COM port five in my case. And I just wanna make a note of that because now in WSJTX, we're gonna change that COM port under cat control to COM port five. Then we're gonna change the baud rate to 9600. Again, I'd like to remind you to follow along with the user instructions on DigiRig's website, but we're gonna set data bits to eight, stop bits to two, handshake to none, PTT method to cat, mode to data packet, and then split operation to fake it. When we click test cat, we should get a green button, followed by test PTT, we should get a red button. And then we know everything is functional. If you don't get a green and a red light respectively, I would probably go back and make sure that you're utilizing the correct COM port that we just found in the device manager. Next, I wanna ensure that my computer is fully synced up with the time frame, so I download JT Sync and I sync the time. Next, I confirm WSJTX and the Yaesu FT891 are functional through the Digi Rig by making a contact with my flex radio. So I made a contact with myself, but it does ensure that things are correct. If you followed along with the user manual and you watch this video, you should be just about good to go. The one thing you might need to slightly adjust is your microphone's output volume levels. And what you want to basically see is in WSJTX, you want your volume bar on the lower left-hand side to be at least 30 dB, but you also don't want to see it peaking in the reds. And this should give you at least a good start in getting going with your DigiRig DR891, which I think is an excellent add-on for your Yezu FT891. Thanks for watching the channel. Have a good one. Take care.